Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today's gonna be a really fun one, all about a really unique amendment you can add to your soil that will add nutrients and microbiology and a really good home for all of those. All right, so you may have guessed from what I had in my hand, we're talking about biochar. So I'm gonna give you guys the rundown on the basics of biochar, what it actually is, how you can make it in your backyard really simply, just with a little campfire. I'll give you some examples of uh, more efficient methods that will give you a better percentage of return on the woody material that you burn to charcoal that you make. First of all, what is biochar? So there's two stages before you finally make biochar. The first stage is just to make charcoal. So charcoal is just the carbon left over from a fire. Now, if you look in the bottom of the fire pit there, the white ash, that's, well, that's ash, right? So that is if the carbon continues to burn beyond that point. Even if you look at a fire when it's burning, you'll notice eventually um, white will start to form on the surface of the wood after it's been burned for too long. Ash is another fantastic amendment um, that you can use in your soil or compost, but you gotta be very careful with it because it has a very high pH. It's very high in phosphate. Once you've made the charcoal, now you have to activate it. You may have heard of activated charcoal before if you've ever taken the health supplement. Um, charcoal is, is used for a, a lot of different things. I, I believe gunpowder is 90% charcoal. You can filter water with activated charcoal. So there's a lot of really good uses for charcoal besides this home that you can inoculate for nutrients and microbes and fungi. So activated charcoal, how do you do that and what does that even mean? So activated charcoal uh, means that it's gone through either a chemical process, which you can do naturally using like lemon juice or you can use um, phosphoric acid. Uh, I'm not gonna be talking about that because we're gonna be doing it via steam activation. And you can make biochar just in a cone that you dig in the ground. That's another way that you can do this. My landlords don't want me doing that, so I'm not gonna show you that technique today. So with the steam activation that we'll be doing, what happens is basically it expands all the pores of the charcoal and in one gram of charcoal, which is probably like this much charcoal, and in this space of activated charcoal, there's about a football field of square footage in here. So that is a lot of space for microbes, fungi, it even um, will hold nutrients and water as well. So when you, after it's been activated, now what this will do is adsorb. Adsor adsorbing means that the molecules will stick to the surface of this. But you also gotta imagine on the inside of here, maybe I can find a picture on Google. Inside of here is like billions and billions of little caves, which are the perfect homes for our friends. So after activation, now in order for it to become biochar, you have to inoculate it. So before you inoculate, you're gonna to wanna to break your biochar up into the smallest particulate that you can. So if you can, if you can turn it into dust, that's fantastic. Um, you can use a chipper shredder. You can just use a bag and like a, a tamper and smash it all. Whatever you need to do to get it into the smaller particles. If you can get it to like a coarse size perlite or less, that's what you're looking for. Um, and then to inoculate it. I think there's two really good ways. You could just put it into a compost pile and it is gonna suck in a ton of nutrients. And you're gonna wanna let it sit in there for I think, you know, a good month is a good idea. Um, I know a lot of people have had issues with biochar if they don't inoculate it long enough, if it's not fully soaked and full with water, microbes, nutrients, full capacity, when you put it out into your field, it will continue to absorb those nutrients, kind of as if you were to bury a bunch of big wood chips or to bury logs out there, they're gonna suck in nitrogen. So now the other way that you can inoculate would be inside of a worm or compost tea. That's what I like to do a lot. Or you can just take a bucket of water, add in the charcoal. Um, I, I recommend aerating it, of course. We wanna keep these uh, microbes aerobic and the oxygen should help uh, mix everything up and help, help um, make the charcoal hydrostatic when it finally switches over and then it can like hold on to the molecules. You're gonna wanna do that, I, I believe people recommend for about two weeks. If you'd like to learn really more details and um, really the nitty gritty about this, you guys gotta check out 
Living Web Farms. They have a YouTube channel. So what biochar is really good for is for not fertile soil or repairing soil. People who already have 10% organic matter or you know really good soil, adding this isn't gonna help as, as much as something with non-fertile soil. Maybe the soil biology isn't very good there. Maybe chemical ag and tilling was done before there. That's a great time to use biochar because it's going to be packed with all the microbes, the fungi, nutrients, and things that your plants are gonna need and it's a permanent home that can um, be there for any future microbes. I've even seen biochar used in things such as aquaponics systems, and I think there's a lot of future uses that we can use this for if we think of it as a home for all these good guys. And there's a lot of different ways I think that we can use this. They'll even spray it on the inside of homes uh, to help with like mold and things like that on in natural building. And so there's a lot of really interesting uses. I definitely recommend learning more about biochar. What I always did when I did a wheelbarrow of my compost out on the ground, I would just take a real big handful and mix it in. But I believe they, when I, the research that I remember reading was anywhere from like five to 10% can be biochar. but going beyond it the studies found that it didn't really help as much so that five to ten percent was the sweet spot how are we going to build this fire to create the biochar well biochar is made most efficiently through pyrolysis and pyrolysis is a burn that is lacking oxygen so we're trying it's basically we're trying to have a smokeless burn or the closest thing to it and this sort of situation is the least efficient. We might put in the wood that we get in, maybe we'll get back 5% biochar or something. Now, if you use some of these biochar reactors, you can build them from 55 gallon drums really cheaply. They also have biochar machines where they can get 99% of the biochar out. Um, I recommend if you're doing it larger scale to build one of these 55 gallon metal drum systems. I'll put a link in the description um, to a video I like about where they're making it so you can learn more. This is just to teach you guys real simply here. And if I was gonna do this at home where I could do whatever I wanted, then I would just dig a cone. It has to be at a certain angle. I believe it's th around 30 degrees. And that cone shape um, helps create that vortex where the fire's being burned from the top and not actually the bottom. Most campfires we set we light from the bottom, but a biochar fire, we light from the top to burn downwards. And that's what uh, gives us the effect of, of burning without oxygen. So now what we're gonna do, we're basically gonna, we're gonna build a backwards fire. So instead of putting all the little stuff, the kindling and all that on the bottom, we're gonna put it on the top and put the thicker, uh, longer burning wood on the bottom. It can be a little bit tricky, especially I don't have much room. Um, using like some dried brush is really good for the starting the top of the fire and then some smaller kindling, bigger, biggest at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this together and then I'll tell you more about biochar as I'm building it. So when you're choosing your wood for your biochar fire, you wanna use completely natural wood. Do not use plywood anything that's been treated, anything that's been painted, or has ever had a chemical on it. Because those chemicals will get trapped inside of your biochar and then, then you're inoculating your garden or farm with toxic chemicals. One of the best woods in the world to use is bamboo. The conversion is really good and it grows extremely fast. So biochar is, um, I think, best made with bamboo, but there's a lot of other ways to make it. So I've got my harder, really good wood at the bottom. That's This is gonna make the best coals from this wood. And then I've got all this really light pallet wood here. You can just build a regular campfire, get it hot, and then, you know, at the end of the campfire, you'll have a bunch of coals at the end, and then you'll see how we steam it to activate. So you can just do it super simply. I'm just trying to show you guys a little bit better way. And like I said, if you have brush, that is gonna be an awesome, fuel source. So because this fire pit's really small, it's, it's a little tricky to show you guys how to do this. I wish I could just dig a pit, but once I have my own property, I can do whatever I want. Okay, so I think this is gonna work really well to light from the top. You can see I put a ton of cardboard fuel, stuff that's gonna write, light really easily, and then catch this on fire. And then it's gonna burn this really easy 
uh, and light wood. It's gonna burn from the top down and be a bit less smokeless, but because this is an exposed fire, hopefully the wind will stay down and um, the more wind, the more smoke. Um, that's why when you, when biochar is made on a more commercial scale, it's a completely enclosed process to actually have total paralysis, pyrolysis. I've just set up a little windbreak here with some chairs just to help protect it. it um, the little bit of wind that does come is gonna cause some smoke, but nothing I can do. Quite a, there's quite a bit of smoke, it's not too bad, but it's just too windy, there's no windscreen, this isn't buried in a pit, so. Um, this video is really just to show you the main concepts of how to do this. So now we're getting close to finishing and quenching this. What I'm waiting for now is some of this harder wood that I put in there to break apart when I hit it with a stick. At that point, it'll basically be charcoal. So if you see the wood ash there, that's a sign of not a very good biochar fire, as I predicted, because the, these conditions are just not very good at all. Not super efficient, but we're gonna get a bunch of charcoal at the end of this, especially really good charcoal from that harder wood. <clears throat> so once it starts breaking up, um, I'll start stirring it around and listening to the sound of it. It should sound kind of like glass a little bit, like a bunch of broken glass pieces moving around. Not that high pitched, but you'll see what I mean. Once I feel like I've got enough good charcoal, then I will quench it with water and that will cause the steam activation, creating activated charcoal that we can go then inoculate. Okay, we're just about there. So now watch as I smash. It should fall apart, just break apart very easily into little chunks. If it's not falling apart when I hit it, that means there's still woody material in there that needs to burn a bit longer. Burn off those wood gases, and then we'll just have carbon left. Like I said earlier, the issue with using that light wood is now all these bottom coals, the longer they burn, the more that they will ash off and you'll get less charcoal. So having more similar wood, I think, is a, a smart idea. Okay, so now I'm pretty happy with that. It's all breaking up, so we got charcoal here. So now the next step to quench it, now because this is a real old fire pit, it has a hole in the bottom, it will drain out water. But if you buy your own like Contiki or any of the manufacturers that make one, or if you make your own tea lud 55 gallon drum style, um, you can make it so that it will fill up with water. Um, or you could toss this in a pit filled up in water. Um, basically, you just want to submerge the charcoal. And I'm just going to keep continually spray this and let it fill up. And this, this steam is now activating. So you can hear that. That's the steam being created. And also now all the pores inside of that charcoal are expanding and creating an insane amount of surface area. So I'll let this dry, dry, cool off here and then we'll take a look at the charcoal we made. All right, so here's our charcoal. And the way that you can tell that it is charcoal is that it's gonna break apart very easily. Even something that's a bigger chunk like this, I should be able to just rip it apart without any problem, grind it up into a little powder. So now what we have here is activated charcoal and the next step would be to inoculate it using some of those different methods that I mentioned earlier. So the next thing that you'll wanna do before inoculation is just to powderize this. And by powderizing it, or making it as small as you can, it'll just create even more pore space. So um, you can smash it with a tamper, you can step, do a little dance on top of it, you can throw it through a wood chipper. Diego Footer, who I just hung out with the other day, who makes a lot of biochar, he uses a cement mixer and just throws some rocks in there. And as the it mixes, it's breaking this all up into dust. That worked really well. Also, so those are some good tips for how to powderize this. Once I move to my new property in Tennessee, I plan on building a much more large scale biochar setup with like the 55 gallon metal drum style. So um, stay tuned for some more videos about biochar. Be sure to check out Living Web Farms, uh, their YouTube channels.